All right, let's go ahead and try to pass these tests. And we can start with trying to get this uh, further along. So let's go ahead and go into the controller and go to the um, add this destroy action that it's complaining about. And we can keep it blank for right now to, to see what happens here and rerun the tests. And while we're doing that, we should think about what we want this destroy action to do. Uh, it's not like creating a new user, editing a user, or displaying a list of users, because in, in this case, we're doing an action that's only supposed to be done with the database, and it doesn't have anything to do with expecting a, a new output from the website specifically. And so when we see this error here about not having a template, uh, well, that makes sense. We don't want it to have a specific output. Let's ha reuse an output from, from some other action. And if you uh, remember from the test, we actually say that this destroy should redirect us back to the list of, of users that we have. And, and that makes sense because we don't have a better place to go. We can't display the user that we just deleted, that doesn't exist in memory. They don't have a profile page anymore. And so this is as, as good of a redirection as we can get. And now what we want to do is deal with these other areas where they're complaining about not having a link to, to delete, which is true because we haven't put that in there yet. So if we go to our view for our users, we remember that we do this specific rendering. So if we then go to that partial, we can <clears throat> see where we should put things in. And in general, uh, let me just format this a little bit. Um, what we would do is some sort of a href equals something and uh, try to get everything set up and and you can do that and you can write that to work but rails has a, a nice mechanism to do that for you a lot easier and that is to use this uh, link to command and the link to method takes two parameters the first one is the text that should show up on the website so we know from our test that we want it to say delete and so we'll put that in here and then the second is the URL and we could do user path and we could pass it user but we know that the only possible path for the user is that user path, so we can just provide that particular object and it's going to give us the right URL. So let's go ahead and do that. And now, um, before we run the test, I want to show what that looks like on the web browser because um, we want to see what happens. So if we go to our, our list of users, we now see our, our delete links here. And if we go ahead and look at that HTML, we see we get the right A link and it points to these right things. But here's interesting. What happens if I go to that link? It's a get request and it's going to go to that user's profile page, which is not what we want that link to do. We want that link to actually refer to deleting that user. And that's a problem because all these links, because they're a, an A type link, always refer to a get request. And we want a delete request to be made from them. And, and we, don't, um, we can't do that uh, specially. And so what we need to do is we need to take advantage of JavaScript. So what we're going to do is we're going to, to pass to Rails. We're going to tell Rails, hey, we need help. We, we want this normal hyperlink method to be changed from a get request to a, a delete request. And when we do that, I'm going to refresh this page right here and look at the HTML that results from it. And you can see there is a, a change here. They, we've got this added data method delete here. Um, there's also this, but that's a slightly different topic. This data method delete is a mechanism so that all these JavaScript libraries that are being linked to by, automatically for us by Rails, they will search for this data method. 
and they will say, oh, that's a hyperlink that normally would be a get request, but because it's set to delete here, what we're going to do is we're going to put an event listener on this hyperlink. And when the user tries to click on that link like this right here, what we're going to do is we're going to intercept that click. We're going to create an AJAX request that connects to the server, but instead of connecting to the server with a GET request, like it would be if we clicked on that link, we're going to simulate a delete request. The server is going to see that delete request and operate like it uh, should as a delete request, and then whatever response the server gives back to us will mimic uh, that response being done in the web browser. So in our case, we want it to redirect to this page, and so when we click on these links here, we will get redirected back. And so if you look really carefully, it goes to the local host and, and comes back real quickly. And th that's all because of the nature of that. If, if we wanted to see what happened if we turned off JavaScript, we can um, uh, do config about, uh, excuse me, about config, and we can search for JavaScript, and we can turn it off. So now we don't have any JavaScript anymore, and if we go back here and reload it, and now we try to click on this page, this link, it actually brings us to that user's profile page because the JavaScript did not capture that event because we've turned off JavaScript. But most modern browsers either make it really impossible, I mean how many users know about this config about uh, in, um, or about config, excuse me, uh, tab that exists in, in Firefox or uh, in equivalent versions of Chrome and so forth. And so most users are going to have JavaScript enabled at, at this point. Uh, but this is a, a really important thing to understand about how these links need to cooperate with JavaScript to get us that delete functionality. So now that we've added these delete methods, we, we should expect to see some more test pass. So let's go ahead and see that. Uh, they aren't all going to pass, of course, because we're able to display our deletes, but we're not actually doing anything in, in them. And so what we see are our three matches. But wait, wait. It doesn't see any delete link. We saw a delete link when we went here what's going on? That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't match what our expectation of the web browser is. Um, and this this is really confusing. So le normally you go to the web browser to see what's going on and what the web browser says is going on is not what the tests say are going on. Let's try to debug our tests. So if we go to our test here the first thing we want to do is we want to see what web page the test is is even looking at. So we're going to make a fake test here, and I'll just not indent it to make it really clear. And all it's going to do is it's going to print out on the screen the page body. Remember, the page is the object that contains the results of the web page that we did our visit here. So the body is the HTML body that is part of that request. And so if we run that and um, <coughs> see what gets displayed on the screen, we'll be able to see why our tests don't think there are any delete links while our web server page didn't. And Here's our key right here. List of users, zero users. Well, why aren't there any users? Well, first of all, this is our testing database. It doesn't have the same data as our development database that we're using with our web page. So every time we start a new test, we start with a blank database. And when do we create our user, our let user? 
Well, we don't create it yet when we do this before. We wait on, in, in this it case, we never create it. And in this it case, we don't create it until we check the web page that we have back has a link to that particular user. So remember I said that this let was broken in some way? I hope that you were able to see that the reason why is because this is not a um, lazy, this is not a greedy, it's a lazy allocation. And so we weren't creating the user until we were already looking at that um, website for uh, that particular user to exist. And so we were waiting too late to create that user. So now if we make that change and rerun our test, now things are going to look a lot different because what's going to happen now is we create the user immediately and we have one less error as a result. Notice our web page now has that one user and it has a link to that user in, in delete. So now our failures are things like the database didn't change and we didn't have a success method. Oh, so we can we can fix that. Let's go quickly and, and fix each one of those. First, this test has been helpful, but it's no longer necessary, so we can delete it and go to our controller. And let's deal with this, this first problem. We didn't reduce the number of users in our database by one. And that's pretty easy to see because in our destroy, we, we didn't change the number of users. So what we need to do is we need to get our user and it's just like our other case if we run our rake routes command you'll remember that it's got the ID placeholder as, as part of the URL for that user when we delete that user and so we can do this user.find and then we can call the destroy method on that user to say get it out of, of the database and so now if we run our tests we're gonna hope that that removes the the user from our database and we reduce by one and what we see is that we're down to one failure so so that did work and this last thing is we don't have this success message and that is also going to be easy uh, all we have to do is add in a little flash here success equals um, I don't know let's go like this at user name removed from the site now this might seem weird to you because we just deleted the user from the database and then we access that user's name method you need to remember that this at user remains in memory and so we can still access their attributes like we do right here even after we've destroyed them from the database um, until it gets removed from memory so at the end of this request at user will go away and we won't have access to them either in memory or in the database at that point so if we run our tests here we will see not only now have we deleted the user but we should have a success message displayed for that user. And this is something that's significant enough of functionality we want to verify it works in, in our web browser. So let's delete one of these users. I'm going to pick John Doe the second here. And when we delete that user, uh, we uh, better turn on the web server. And once we turn on the web server and try to delete that user, we see that John, do, John Doe II has been removed from the site and they're no longer part of the listing of the user. So this delete mechanism does work and we're able to pass all our tests.